Patch 9.0.5 is well underway and you might be thinking to yourself, do I still have the best legendary from my class? Luckily for you, we will be going over the best legendaries for each class, showing you exactly which ones you need to be crafting. So before you drop 5000 dust at the rune carver, make sure to stick around and watch this video. But first, we have a question for all of you. What do you think is the most broken legendary so far in Shadowlands? Our pick would be Misshapen Mirror from Warriors. This is by far one of the most frustrating legendaries to play against, especially as a caster. When a warrior plays this along with the Overwatch PvP talent, it can feel impossible to land crowd control on healers without cross CCing the warrior. But what do you think? Which legendary seems the most broken? Let us know in the comments below. Starting off our Frost DKs, and to no surprise, their best legendary is still Absolute Zero. This legendary unlocks a kill setup for DKs, allowing them to stun targets with their Frostworm's Fury. This is part of the bread and butter win conditions for Windwalker DK, who chain Leg Sweep into Frostworm's Fury for a massive AoE combo on enemy teams. But if Frost isn't your thing and you're still sticking with Unholy, then your best legendary is Frenzied Monstrosity. With the rise in popularity of Unholy DKs in comps like Resto Shaman TSG, it is possible that with a few changes, Unholy could be a potential meta breaker. Frenzied Monstrosity gives you an additional bonus to one of your primary damage cooldowns, allowing you to do even more damage with burst CDs or even extending your pressure after your burst has been used. Moving on to Demon Hunters, there are two legendaries you can swap between in PvP. The first is Darkest Hour, which is your most useful defensive legendary. You mainly want to play this against comps like Rogue Mage or any other setup based comp that is likely to kill you in a stun. Because Demon Hunters are really squishy, the auto proc Darkness gives you some added durability and can completely shut down a kill attempt when you are unable to react. If you aren't worried about dying in stuns, then your offensive option is Chaos Theory. Simply put, it is just the best for raw throughput, which is why it's even the best DPS legendary in PvE. So if you're not worried about dying in a stun to a setup based comp, this is a solid option for raw throughput. Now it's time to talk about druids, starting off with balance. Boomkins have two powerful legendaries depending on which covenant you play. If you're a Night Fae, then you should probably play with balance of all things. This legendary is responsible for a lot of the convoke one shots you see in arena. When you use Incarnation, you instantly proc Eclipse, activating this legendary and giving you 40% increased crit chance. If you immediately Convoke, you will have increased crit on your spells, giving you huge one-shot potential. If you instead play Kyrian, Time Worn Dreambinder is your best legendary option. Because you are not as reliant on the one-shots from Convoke the Spirits, this legendary gives you more consistent bursts, especially during Kindred Spirits. Just like Balance, Pharaoh's legendary options depend a lot on your Covenant. If you're playing Night Fae or Kyrian, your best legendary is Eye of Fearful Symmetry. This will simply give you the best burst in Arena, giving you quicker access to your hardest hitting ability Ferocious Bite, especially when you have Berserk popped and you are dealing more damage and generating more combo points. Overall, this efficient combo point generation allows you to quickly get combo points for your burst and bleed damage. If instead you are playing Necrolord, your best legendary option is Draft of Deep Focus. As Necrolord, you have Adaptive Swarm, which increases your dot damage on targets. This legendary synergizes well with Adaptive Swarm, allowing you to get even stronger dots on your kill target. A neutral option for any covenant is the Natural Order's Will, which is your primary defensive legendary. It is worth using this against Rogue Mage as it will give you additional durability against their high burst damage. As far as Resto Druid is concerned, there is really only one viable legendary in PvP, and that is Verdant Infusion. This legendary was actually buffed in the recent patch, but buffs aside, it will probably be the best legendary for the entire expansion. Without this legendary, Swift Mend will remove a rejuvenation from the target, and because Resto Druid Mastery increases your healing for every hot you have on a target, you are actually nerfing your healing by not playing with this legendary. The only time you might switch this legendary is to play Draft of Deep Focus as Feral Affinity in 2s, but even then, the healing fluidity from Verdant Infusion is almost too good to pass up. With patch 9.0.5, monks are starting to switch over to Serenity from Whirling Dragon Punch into Cloth and Leather teams, and because of this, Shrun's Battle Gear is becoming a solid legendary choice. When combined with Serenity, this power gives you more consistent Rising Sun Kick crits on your kills, giving you even more burst and a really reliable kill setup on targets. If instead you are playing Whirling Dragon Punch, Invoker's Delight remains your best legendary, giving you a longer damage modifier to use alongside your Shrin. So all in all, your legendary choice really depends on whether you are playing Serenity or Invoker's Delight. For Miss Weaver, you have a few choices, with your main legendary option being Sefu's. It is no secret that Miss Weaver monks can die easily in stunts, so having reduced stun duration helps. 
Along with the additional throughput increase from its secondary stats, this is a well-rounded legendary option. Some alternative options include Clouded Focus, which can be selected in melee cleave matchups where you likely won't be the kill target. This legendary allows you to be more mana efficient, something which is needed in resource-intensive melee mirrors. In other matchups where mana use isn't quite as intensive and there isn't a mortal strike on the enemy team, Tear of Mourning is a good option. Although its healing doesn't seem like much on its surface, it is a big part of AoE healing throughput into comps like Shadowplay. Following a buff in patch 9.0.5, Red Paladins are now starting to play with the final Verdict Legendary. This is a really well-rounded offensive option, weaving perfectly into your DPS rotation and allowing you to get even more damage with one of your primary burst abilities. As a defensive option, Red Paladins can choose to play Reign of Endless Kings, which is really useful against comps like Rogue Mage where you can easily be killed in a stun setup. The damage reduction proc from this power gives you an additional defensive to work around enemy kill setups, so it should be considered against setup-based comps where you know you are the kill target. With that in mind, because of its damage, the value of Final Verdict is almost too high to pass up, and one drawback of Endless Kings is that you can still be overkilled from 20% to 0 by high burst teams. For Holy Paladins, because Kyrian is by far your best covenant, Shock Barrier is by far your best legendary. With Divine Toll casting Holy Shock, the Shock Barrier power adds huge value by adding a shield to affected targets. You can also play Reign of Endless Kings as a defensive option, though just like Red Paladins, it will almost always be outweighed by the throughput bonus of Shock Barrier. Moving on to Priest, Shadow has a really well-rounded legendary with Sefus's Proclamation. Because other Shadow Priest legendaries are really situational, this legendary is usually your default choice. Its buff has high uptime due to how often you will be CCing and dispelling enemy players, so you get high value from its effect. Twins of the Sun Priestess is a more aggressive option and can be selected against teams with limited offensive dispels. This legendary gives your team some additional offensive power when playing with another caster. Vault of Heavens is a defensive option that can be selected to give you more mobility against melee cleaves that will train you. If you're playing with other classes that have high mobility where you generally won't need to life grip them away from damage, this legendary gives you more overall movement and survivability in arena. Finally, Measured Contemplation is another solid defensive choice, so long as the enemy team doesn't have many interrupts. It is especially good as Mage Shadow Priest because you can utilize the bonus heal from Shadow Mend in cases where you get interrupted on your mass dispel casts to remove CC. The more kicks your team can soak for you, the more value this legendary gets. Just like Shadow, this priest also benefit the most from Sephus's proclamation. With a 30 second internal cooldown and a 15 second duration, the secondary stat proc from this power has around 50% uptime in arena. Considering that priests dispel often and have CC spells, you will usually have the buff up often and will get high value from its effect. An alternative option in 2v2 is Crystalline Reflection. Because 2v2 is more centered around damage, you will gain a lot of value from this effect. In general though, Sephus is your best overall option. For Holy Priests, Harmonious Apparatus is your primary legendary effect. Simply put, this power smooths out your healing rotation, giving you more frequent access to your primary healing ability. It also gives you more frequent access to your Chastise, allowing for more control in Arena. In addition, Apotheosis, which is a primary talent for Holy, interacts with this legendary, increasing the cooldown reduction of your primary abilities even further. Vault of Heavens is a niche choice for Holy Priests. Because they have access to Greater Fade, Holy Priests can use this legendary to quickly get away from enemy melee by comboing it with Fade and Feather to completely avoid enemy damage. Sub rogues pretty much have one legendary option and it has completely defined their playstyle this expansion. Mark of the Master Assassin is by far the best legendary for sub rogues, giving them massive damage on their openers. The strength of this legendary has even affected the playstyle of rogues, encouraging them to go for more frequent restyles to get huge damage out of stealth. The only niche alternative is the Rotten, which is used in rogue one-shot builds with Dagger in the Dark. The damage increase from Dagger in the Dark combined with this legendary gives you massive Shadow Strike damage. With that said, Mark of the Master Assassin is above and beyond the more consistent and better option. As for Assassination, Mark of the Master Assassin is also pretty good, but a more consistent option is Doomblade. With Assassination Rogues moving over to Necrolord, this Covenant change gives them more defensive durability thanks to things like Ooze's Frictionless Coating. This gives them the option of having a more aggressive in-your-face playstyle as opposed to the sub-rogue restealth-based playstyle. 
Because of this, Doomblade is their best legendary option, allowing you to do even more damage while staying in and playing aggressive. Before we go into the remaining legendaries, we wanted to tell you about the amazing things happening on our website, skillcaps.com wow. We work with the best players in the world to bring you the highest quality instructional content for PvP. Our course guides and matchup breakdowns include information sourced from the best pro players. Our videos are created for all players regardless of your skill level or experience and are designed to make you a better player and increase your rating. So if you're looking to take your gameplay to the next level, check us out at skillcaps.com wow. Joining our website will give you instant access to all of our videos as well as an invite to our premium discord where you can interact directly with the pros. Now it's time to go into shaman legendaries starting with elemental. The most well-rounded legendary for Ellie is Windspeaker's Lava Resurgence. This legendary is by far the biggest overall DPS increase for the spec, giving you great sustained damage from one of your primary damaging abilities. An alternative but more niche option is Elemental Equilibrium, which could be used to get more burst. All in all, Windspeaker's Lava Resurgence is likely your best pick for legendaries right now. As far as enhancement is concerned, there is some potential room for switching your primary legendary. Of course, Doom Winds remains a really strong option for enhance. Lining up perfectly with Bloodlust, this gives you huge burst damage every minute, but now with teams being more aware of Doom Wind's damage, many players are starting to CC Shamans during its effect. Because of this, Legendary of the Frost Witch is a potential legendary alternative as it gives you really good sustained damage especially since you will be using Maelstrom procs often in order to off heal. Restoration Shamans have a pretty straightforward legendary pick with Earth and Harmony. Simply put, this power is budgeted well for Arena, giving you additional healing when your Earth Shield target is below 75%. This matches up well with the general playstyle of Resto Shamans, who rely mostly on their instant cast heals for their healing throughput. When combined with Resto Shaman Mastery, having a target below 75% HP will also give you stronger heals overall, duplicating the benefit from Earth in Harmony. Moving on to Affliction Warlock's Sacrilicious Dark Strike remains the best legendary power. This is probably one of the most controversial legendary effects in Arena, and is incredibly frustrating to play against, especially as a melee DPS. Combining a passive slow effect into one of their primary damaging abilities, this legendary gives Affliction Warlocks a much needed zoning tool against enemy melee. When combined with Port, Gateway, and Soul Shape, this legendary can make Warlocks almost unhittable while they snare your entire team. Destruction has a bit of flexibility with its legendary options, depending on whether you prefer consistent damage or burst. Representing the consistent option is Cinders of the Ajakir. When combined with the Flash over Talent, this gives you pretty good instant cast damage and allows you to generate more back draft procs. If instead you prefer more burst damage, then Madness of the Ajakir is for you. If you can save up enough soul shards for two Chaos Bolts, you can pull off some huge damage in Arena with this legendary. You will be sacrificing some consistent damage here, but the damage increase and cast time reduction to Chaos Bolt can be really rewarding if you manage to land two bolts in a row with this legendary. Moving on to Hunter, your legendary choice is pretty straightforward. Craven Stratagem is the best legendary power for every Hunter spec, period. When combined with the Survival Tactics PvP talent, it turns your Feign Death into one of the strongest defensive abilities in the game, allowing you to remove harmful debuffs from yourself. For instance, you can use Feign Death with this legendary to remove a full row of dots from Shadow Play, and even making you immune to the damage, silence, and horror effects that normally come along with dispelling Unstable Affliction or Vampiric Touch. For all specs of Mage, Triune Ward is by far the best legendary available. This effect adds to the passive tankiness of mages, giving them even stronger shields and adding their defensive toolkit that includes Alter Time and Ice Block. This turns your shields into a primary defensive cooldown, allowing you to survive while your healer is stuck in CC. This power also gives mages some additional dispel protection, preventing their primary damaging cooldowns like Combustion, Icy Veins, or Arcane Power from being instantly dispelled. There are some offensive options available for each mage spec, such as Fevered Incantation for Fire, Freezing Winds for Frost, and Arcane Bombardment for Arcane. But in general, the defensive benefit from Triune Ward is usually too much to pass up. Finally, we have everyone's favorite class, Warrior. Warriors have a bunch of legendary options, and one of the Covenant-specific choices is Exploiter. Simply put, this power gains huge value as Venthyr because of how often you can condemn your target. It works well with the class, especially combined with the Death Sentence PvP talent. If you are not Venthyr, then Battlelord is probably your safest general option. This legendary smooths out your DPS rotation and gives you more consistent mortal strikes. Because it's important to keep up healing reduction in Arena, this legendary has really high value. This also allows you to play Rend as an optional talent. With more usable Rage, you can dump your Excess Rage into a damaging ability other than Slam, giving you more overall pressure. 
One defensive option for any Covenant is Misshapen Mirror, which can be selected into caster teams. When combined with the Overwatch PvP talent, this allows warriors to deflect enemy setups involving CC, like Polymorph or Cyclone. An alternative offensive option is Unhinged, which can be selected in comps where you will rely on AoE pressure. This gives you massive AoE damage during your Blade Storm and allows you to spread healing reduction on multiple targets. And finally, as a final alternative option, you can play Signet of Tormented Kings. One drawback of Unhinged is that it can proc mortal strikes on random pets instead of your kill target. On top of that, sometimes you want to use Bladestorm as a root breaker and not as damage, which would sort of negate its purpose. Signet of Tormented King solves those problems, giving you more flexibility to use your Bladestorm as a root breaker. And there you have it, those are the best legendaries in Arena updated for patch 9.0.5. The legendary system might change, and if it does, we want you to stay up to date on any future changes. For the time being, these are your best options, as picked by some of the best players in the world. Once again, we want to know what you think the most broken legendary is, so let us know in the comments below. If you liked this video, make sure to give us a like. To stay up to date on future uploads, be sure to subscribe and turn all notifications on. That way, you will never miss a video. See you soon!